Good morning, guys. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy. Today, we have a very interesting case. This is gout, and specifically a gouty tophus. A tophus, all a tophus is, is a collection of these uric acid crystals in the form of monoso- monosodium urate crystals. So you may be wondering, gout, isn't that an inflammatory condition or, or some type of arthritis? Well, yes, that's definitely the most common presentation. Um, as you may know, somebody affected by gout or have seen one of these before, but uh, you can see the the classical demonstration is on the kind of the big toe. And you can see that right here, it is very red. These things are extremely painful and they they generally uh, are very warm and and red like this. Um, However, occasionally you do get gout involvement of skin. So here's another uh, lesion on the elbow of a individual with gout, and you can see it's protruding out. And sometimes um, these crystals or these tophi, they can erode through the skin surface, um, and then it'll appear somewhat chalky. But one of the most common locations is actually the ear. You can see here we have this small little chalky um, nodule. Okay, so gout as a whole, is basically a dysfunction in purine metabolism. So in general, there's a elevated blood level of uric acid. So to break that down, the easiest way that I can explain that is the uric acid levels within the blood are high. And and that's because either there is a problem in the ability of the kidneys or the body to excrete um, these purine molecules And I think that's the most common cause, you know, through diuretics um, or uh, some type of inherent kidney disease. Um, The second type would be essentially the inability or rather uh, too much overproduction of purine um, or a surplus of purine. Um, This occurs rarely in a genetic. There are genetic um, defects that in, in various enzymes that cause an accumulation of purine molecules. Also, the more common thing would be like individuals with myelo, myeloproliferative disease. When they undergo uh, chemotherapy, there's rapid cell turnover and cell death. So all those purines get uh, overloaded in the blood and your body has a hard time getting rid of all of them at once. Um, dietary things also contribute to gout. And here, you know, pretty much the things that we have known to love, uh, like beer, uh, high fructose corn syrup type, corn syrup type things, you know, meats, fit some types of fish and organ meat. They're all bad for for gout because they they have a high level of purines. <clears throat> so microscopically, I guess it's easier to look at it on on images like this because you can see that these are your crystals. And um, the crystals are needle shaped and they're brown. If, if, um, so the interesting thing about gout is that if you don't fix the, the specimen correctly, um, you need to fix it in alcohol and then without any water during processing um, because gout crystals are actually water soluble. So if it's not processed correctly, which by and large, the majority of times it's not, um, you're not going to see this crystal. So I'm just showing here what the crystals actually look at, look like. And this is from Dr. McKee's textbook. And you can see the crystals here. I guess it's a little bit bright, but you can see that they're these fine kind of crystals. And here, this is under polarized light and, and you can make it out better. So coming back to our case now, our case is actually, this is on the ear, and you can see that it almost forms this sort of crateriform lesion. And if you didn't look closely or you just look really quickly, it, it'd be easy to mistake this for like a keratoacanthoma. Um, but uh, so if I come into higher power, you can see that this is the amorphous type stuff when, when the specimen's in, improperly uh, fixed. But there's still some retained kind of crystalline-like structures here. You can see these fine needle uh, arrangements.
And oftentimes, you know, you can imagine this thing is extremely painful. We do see sort of a mononuclear infiltrate of lymphocytes, plasma cells. Um, and I guess there's some EOs and newts here, but that's not a common thing. Oftentimes, these things can become uh, fibrosed over. Uh, not really visible in this thing. But again, the keys to this thing are just to find this fine wispy kind of strands oftentimes they sort of form like basket woven appearance here and off the edge of it you'll see histiocytes histiocytes will typically line and try to wall off these crystals and in the skin sometimes it erodes through the surface and clinically this will appear very chalky and um, sometimes yellow looking Okay, I'm just showing you another example from Path Presenter, similar kind of thing. Um, this one is uh, probably mid to deep dermis into the sub Q a little bit. So this one is not preserved correctly, and you can see it's harder to make out those crystal like structures, but I guess you can still see some of them here and there. Um, and this one's actually a little bit more fibrotic right around that edge. You can see it's extremely fibrosed already. And this is just an image that I had shot before, you know, we have this stuff, it's not preserved at all. And you have histiocytes lining um, the lesion here or, or, or the crystals here. So tell me guys, um, do you guys know anybody with gout and what has been their experiences? Has it ever showed up on the skin or is it predominantly just within joints? I'd like to hear your response. So if this has helped you at all, please like, subscribe. I typically post three videos a week. 